Lately, I've been looking at two radio-related BBC projects. The first one is a documentary called Tower Block Dreams from 2003, and the other is a mockumentary series called People Just Do Nothing, which ran from 2011 to 2018. While enjoying both of these brilliantly made projects, I, like I'm sure many others have, observed a lot of similarities between the two, which I thought I'd share. So let's look at the background behind the two first. Tower Block Dreams was actually a three-part documentary series that broadcast on BBC3 during January of 2004, and looked at the underground music scene on some of London and South End on Sea's roughest council estates. This video will only look at episode 2, Ghetto on Sea, which featured MCs Killer and Gambit from South End. Killer ran Y2K FM, a pirate radio station in the area, and the episode focused on his life, his run-ins with the law, and the people who helped him run the station, take other stations off the air, and organise raves. People Just Do Nothing is an amazingly made and very funny mockumentary sitcom, created and performed by Alan Mustafa, Steve Stamp, Azim Chowdhury, and Hugo Chegwim. The programme follows the lives of MC Grinder. DJ Beats and their friends who run Corrupt FM, a pirate radio station broadcasting UK garage and drum and bass music from a flat in Brentford in West London. The first thing I noticed from watching both projects is the similarities between the people in Tower Block Dreams and the characters in People Just Do Nothing. It's clear to see that the main character, MC Grinder, is based around Killer. They have the same look, attitude and role in their respective stations. MC Grinder is in his early 30s in People Just Do Nothing and Killer was 21 when the Tower Block Dreams project started in late 2001. Grinder's right hand man is MC Beats. The two are best friends and run Corrupt FM together. This character is based on a real life Beats from Y2K FM. The character Decoy is a level-headed MC and DJ at Corrupt FM who wants a better life for himself and you can see this in Tower Block Dreams through Gambit, an aspiring star who hoped that his MCing career would give him an alternative lifestyle that didn't revolve around the drug scene and an illegal pirate radio station. It's also worth noting that there was an MC at Y2K who was called Decoy. Another character clearly based around Tower Block Dreams is Mish, Grinder's girlfriend. She sticks by him through everything he does, despite perhaps not being happy with everything that goes on, and Killer's girlfriend at the time, Joe, appeared to be exactly the same. And lastly, Killer's runaround and promoter, Dyson, had to be the inspiration for Hopeless Romantic and owner of 28 failed businesses, Chibuddy G. You only have to see both projects to see that they both did the same job and both bore the brunt of the respective station managers. So now let's look a bit at both radio stations. Y2K FM was somewhat more successful than Corrupt. It was the biggest pirate radio station in Essex at the time, transmitting from South End's tower blocks, and it had a wide reach across Essex, Kent and East London. Corrupt FM, however, had a reach of just a couple of square miles, until just before it was taken off the air, when its reach at that time was 100 yards or so, due to the antenna being bent and propped up inside the studio. Both Y2K and Corrupt were based in unused flats in high-rise blocks. Y2K was housed in a flat in exchange for drugs for its owner, and Corrupt was in Steve's Nan's flat which became vacant after she moved into a nursing home. It's clear that People Just Do Nothing paid close attention to Y2K's home setting when creating Corrupt Setup. Both stations had their transmitter at the station with no microwave link separating the studio with the transmitter site. This made them easy targets for the DTI and in fact Corrupt was raided. 
I found it really interesting to see some of these similar shots around the studio such as Killer, Beats and Joe saying goodbye, much like Grinder, Decoy and Mish did. There are other similar shots as well between the two projects including lift scenes and even the station being tuned in on the home hi-fi system. One of the many plot similarities between Tower Block Dreams and People Just Do Nothing is when Corrupt FM receives a letter from a neighbour threatening council action based on the station's noise levels. Y2K received a similar letter threatening violence from a neighbour's boyfriend as well as an official noise warning letter. Both projects show their respective station managers reading them out in a similar way. One of the main stories in Tower Block Dreams is the attempt by Killer and the Y2K team to organise a rave. You can see Killer handing out flyers to try and encourage people to the rave in much the same way Steve's and Grinder do for theirs. The Y2K rave however ended in disaster and everybody had to be refunded, but the corrupt rave was somewhat more successful. Killer's frustrations over not receiving subs from the station's DJs led him to switch off the radio transmitter and remove the antenna from the roof of a nearby tower block. In an episode covering corrupt cold war between rival station Cold FM, Grinder and Beats head to the roof to remove their own aerial so Cold FM couldn't, reducing their broadcast range significantly because it ended up in the studio. Grinder claimed that the idea was so stupid that Cold FM wouldn't even believe that they had done it. The whole aesthetic between the two projects is very similar, and although People Just Do Nothing was created 10 years later, it still retains that early 2000s pirate radio scene vibe. In a scene where Decoy Beats and Chabuddy G inspect damage to their antenna from Cold FM, you can clearly see the inspiration from a tower block dream scene showing Killer and Beats taking down a rival station's antenna from its rooftop. Y2K gave away a signed poster from all the DJs and Corrupt FM gave away a signed bottle of Sean Paul Gaultier perfume. And the last significant plot similarity is where Grinder ends up in court over a drop cigarette butt. He leaves court after nearly £800 of fines and in a post-court shot can be seen throwing a cigarette butt on the floor. In the Tower Block Dreams documentary, Killer is in court for driving offences. After his hearing and guilty conviction, he can be seen coming out of court, getting into his car and driving away. So there you have the main similarities I picked out between Tower Block Dreams and People Just Do Nothing. They're obviously both BBC projects based on similar themes, but I found it really interesting just how similar they both are. Tower Block Dreams is a must-see for anybody interested in the back end of the pirate radio scene, and People Just Do Nothing is a really funny show whether you're interested in pirate radio or not. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you.